wonderful Filmora. My name is Sylvia and today we'll be diving into Filmora's drawing tools. This guide is designed for beginners and in it we'll walk you through three different ways you can draw inside Filmora and add your own graphics to your videos. By the end of this tutorial I feel confident that you'll have a true understanding of these features and we'll be able to apply it to whatever project you are working on. So. Without further ado, let's get editing. All right, so the first way we're going to do this is draw using the text tool. Yes, you heard that right. <laughs> text, quick text. Let's move it to over the video and resize to fit the timeline. Right now, you can see much better. We have text here. We can even make it bigger. And we're going to once again click on advanced. You actually can see right here at the top, we have text, shape, image, and delete. But we're going to do a shape. And the one I had in the beginning was this one, the square with the rounded corners. So let's add it. Actually, I'm going to delete the original text. So I'm going to resize it. And here we can put, come with me to a light museum. What I'm going to do and what I had in the beginning, you can obviously do whatever you please here. You may even just not want to add any text and just want to add the shape itself. But here I want to add, I want to add a shadow and maybe the outline as well. And I'm actually going to delete the shape fill and add a shape border. So here I'm going to pick one of these yellow tones from the background. I'm going to add a bigger thickness. So maybe 10 could be fine. A blur would be interesting because it's a light. So maybe, yeah, let's keep it at 10. And then I'm going to edit the text to be a similar color. All right, so I'm gonna fill the text. I'm gonna change the font, change the size to 80 maybe. Okay, so we can do something like this and hit apply. And you have your shape with your text or without your text. All right, so next up, another thing we can use this for is to do a kind of split screen kind of effect. All right, so right now we're going to add this to the timeline. And it, once again, this was shot in a vertical format. So I'm gonna just resize it, maybe keep it like this. And then I'm going to add this over the top. I'm going to make the match. So what I'm going to do, instead of clicking the text box option, I'm going to click this, the draw tool. And I'm actually going to choose a rectangle this time, a normal rectangle, uh, so not the curved one. And I'm going to just draw something quickly here. And I'm going to adjust to fit the screen split effect that I want to have. And this actually looks kind of cool because it's kind of a continuation of the same thing. And once again, we can see right here on the right hand side, we have shape basic. So we have the transform options, which we're not going to be playing with right now. We can do opacity, border, but what I'm going to do is the fill. And I'm going to choose a bright or kind of a darker red tone. And you can actually also do a gradient. So we can do this. Um, you can make the angle like vertically. So um, that would be 90 degrees. And we can make it go from a brighter tone to a darker shade. And that way it matches. Just like the other one, you can just use your creativity and 
apply it to whichever case scenario you're trying to get done. I'm going to use one of the ones I used for the intro, this one right here that's like kind of a water effect. And I'm going to be adding a shape. So in this case, I think I'm going to do an arrow and I'm going to draw it going up because in this video I'm going up and actually this is not going up. Um, but it's okay. You can just come right here to transform and rotate it. Go that way. Yes, exactly. And I'm going to make it a little bit, maybe a, a fat arrow. And once again, I like the effect of just having the border, not the fill. So I'm going to be doing, once again, pulling a color from the background. And maybe this one isn't very visible. I need to pick a a lighter color. This one. Perfect. So I'm going to be blurring, maybe make the thickness uh, lower. And we can have that be like that. Or we can even do, you know, we can do a fill, maybe do this color right here and have the opacity be way lower. That way it still has some color to the arrow itself. So it gives a different effect. That part is a little bit darker, but you can still see what's going on behind it. As you probably know by now, hit the drawing tool, triangle, or whatever shape you want to do. Uh, and I'm going to quickly just set it up as I had before. And I'm going to just quickly find my triangle, move it down, and adjust it to fit the clip that I'm working with. And so now begins the fun. So I'm actually going to go move my cursor to the beginning of the clip and the timeline. And I'm going to be moving the triangle almost outside the screen. And how we're going to be doing this animation is we're going to go into Shape, Basic, Transform. And in my case, I just changed the position and the rotation, but you can also do the scale, for example, and have it bigger and smaller, but we're going to keep it simple and just do the position. So we're actually going to be adding a keyframe and then another keyframe for rotation. And what these do is it saves the position of the shape in that point in time in the timeline. And then we're going to actually move our cursor down the timeline a little bit. And we're going to want to add another keyframe right there and move the thing, the triangle in this case. Move it. Oops. This is not what I wanted to move. Move it. Maybe rotate it a little bit. And like this. So it kind of hits the border of the frame. In my case, that's the effect that I want to give. But you may want to do something different. And we're going to essentially be repeating this along the timeline a couple times, however many as you'd like, until it has the desired effect. And by the way, you don't even need to add the keyframes. I believe if you just rotate it, yeah, it adds another keyframe for the rotation. And if you move it, adds a keyword, a uh, keyframe for the position. So it's even easier than I was making it seem. So let me just quickly do this a couple more times and we'll see how it went. Let's add one last one and let's have it go back to center. So zero rotation and let's have it centered in the end. And let's go back and play it to see the effect. That's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and happy editing. I'll see you guys next time.